So Rory O'Brien uh, would have streamed a number of our matches uh, last year and did a very, very fine job indeed. And we'll be looking for um, uh, more of the same from Rory uh, down the road as well. So uh, stay oh, tuned right. for further developments on that front. So Rory O'Brien, uh, very, very pleased to have you on board uh, this evening. Uh, I'll moderate the, the chat function and the Q&A. There's already one in. Uh, yes, Paul, uh, we will be recording and have started recording this uh, webinar and it will be on the YouTube page. So uh, thanks for getting in touch, Paul. So that's one, one down and I'm sure many more queries to go. Rory, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, over to you and thanks for coming on board tonight. Thanks, Jackie. Um, good evening, everyone. And um, thanks for taking the time out and spending it uh, with us this evening. Over the next hour, what I'm going to do is give you, we'd say, my idea of streaming, um, where I've, I'll give you an idea of who I am, where I've come from, what my experience is. I'll give you a look behind the scenes of some of the stuff we did last year. Um, I'll give you a brief look at the technical part of it, because I can see that the, the numbers that we have online at the moment, as soon as I start talking technical, which really is my forte, that number will drop off the face of the earth. And you'd probably want to go back to look at a Fair City omnibus or something. So I'll keep that one very, very brief. We'll touch on what is live streaming, why you should stream, the benefits that it would have um, to you, we'd say at club or county level. And we'll talk about the various streaming models as well. There will be three primary streaming models. And the, the last one being where people would naturally pay for it. And we'll, we'll just, we'll, because that's down the road and it, it might be for a more national kind of conversation, we'll, we'll gloss over that. So <clears throat> a quick look at who I am. That's my, that's my arty photograph. Um, my name is Rory O'Brien. I've worked in radio and television, uh, both in an on-air capacity and in an engineering capacity for over 30 years. Um, if anything, if anyone would like to say on the chat function now, you don't look it. Thank you. I've um, 10 years experience then working in print and video graphics, and I've 20 years experience in radio and broadcast engineering. Um, some of the companies I've worked with include RTE, uh, Virgin Media Television, as recently as the day before yesterday, uh, the BBC, CNBC Europe and US, uh, Ocean FM. Midwest Radio and CNN. And um, in the, the less sexier end of it, I have a degree in business management and business strategy. So what's this streaming thingy all about? Um, before I, I delve into that, let me give you an idea, which as it, it may scare some of you uh, and it may intrigue more of you. Some of the things you don't see, that was under a tent in a typical Irish summer's day in Kent Park in Sligo last year um, for a game. Um, if any of you, if you can see my mouse, what you'll see the main constituent parts of the streaming operation are two commentators, a camera, um, a monitor that looks at all the various inputs we have coming up onto the video mixer, and then the outputs, and then you have the technical wizardry that makes it happen. And then I got a guy sitting there looking at the game who basically takes care of the scoreboard for me. That is an example of a temporary control room that we set up um, in Markovic Park in Sligo last year. That control room was installed and left for about eight weeks during the club championship. <clears throat> for the Sligo LGFA and um, their county final days last year, their county final day last year when they had three games in one, um, we brought on board an outside broadcast unit, a mobile outside broadcast unit, and that was just a quick shot of it inside in Kesh in uh, County Sligo. It also contained a satellite uplink on the roof, which uh, we basically had to make sure that we could get the signal out if we needed to, um, but in the end we didn't. It is probably a lot tidier looking version of what you saw previously, but it has all the constituent parts. It has our screen there to monitor everything. Our audio mixer was there and the video mixer, you, well, you can't see it there, but it's embedded down into the desk. Um, 
The next one was one that we did last year for the LGFA at national level. That was a control room that was set up a little tidier uh, in Carrick and Shannon for the Galway Monaghan game, which was an absolute cracking game. Um, again, the constituent parts of that. These are your mic. This is for controlling your microphones. That laptop there looks after your graphics, and then all the technical wizardry is over here for um, video and vision mixing. And finally, I want to get a collective awe for this one. And uh, the bit you don't see is um, that was at quarter past eight in the morning. We're the first people to arrive on the ground, and nine times out of ten, uh, the ground staff are waiting to lock up um, before we leave. In relation to broadcasting, this is just to get, kind of underline where I'm approaching the whole streaming model from. <clears throat> this was an outside broadcast we did for Virgin Media Television uh, on the six o'clock show, which was about three weeks ago now. That's from a moving boat coming down the Shannon in uh, Carrigan Shannon. And then this was for a very recent news report in the middle of a golf club, um, flagging the fact that golfers are going to be back on the ground um, following COVID. So, live streaming, what is it? Ostensibly, it's a method of data transmission when somebody watches a video on the internet. In olden days, people would have downloaded a video. That meant that the video went from point A to point B and it stayed at point B until the person who was in control of point B deleted it. Streaming has been around for about 15, 20 years. It effectively started with Netflix. Netflix was always on the domain of a laptop, a computer, an iPad, a phone, whatever. Now, if you're buying your new television, you're going into Expert Electrical or Harvey Norman or Curry's or wherever, you're not buying your new TV unless it has the Netflix app on it or it's a smart TV. All right, so a good example of streaming to the layperson would be Netflix, Amazon Prime, are you maybe more familiar with when you see the local priest putting the little iPhone in the corner of the altar on a Sunday morning or whatever and broadcasting his mass? That is also streaming, all right? And it's the same if you have a church camera or whatever. So in relation to where we are, why stream? Um, I don't think I'm speaking out of, out of turn here. I think everybody acknowledges that... Um, the ladies part of the game would largely be considered from time to time, maybe the poor relation of it, of the, um, the men's game. Now, in turn, we all know that the quality of the football that has been witnessed over the last couple of years, I'll tell you one thing, by far at times outweighs some of the games that you would see with the men's. But streaming is something that can help get that out in front of the world. So it's a promotional vehicle of your sport. It'll help you to gain valuable new fans. And those valuable new fans will in turn drive people back to watch the stream. If you know, it's kind of, it's almost a kind of um, a vicious circle because they will tweet about it. They'll mention it about it on Facebook. They'll, they'll put stuff on Instagram about it. So you're streaming to a social media platform that in turn will self-promote the stream, if you know what I mean. So apart from that, you're making your games a lot more accessible to a lot more people. Yes, the argument is there that, oh, well, it might take from that five or 10 or 15 euro we may get off the gate. But at the same time, I'm sure Jackie would concur with this, and I'm sure he'll give you information later on. The figures that were watching some of the games we put to Facebook last year was phenomenal. Yeah, very much. It also gives you an opportunity to bring your sport to people who would otherwise not be able to attend. So we're talking about people who may be infirm, may be disabled, um, they may be in residential care, uh, people who just simply would not feel up to walking along a sideline to get into a seat or you know, are taking that morning of travel to go from one end of the country to another to watch a match uh, and then come home again late that night. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to broadcast matches that would not normally attract television transmission. 
So you can talk about your your junior games, your intermediate games, your your entry level league games, which we're we're staring down the barrel of now. That the, the leagues, yeah, like historically, um, broadcast television will pick and choose the the big games. What streaming does is it allows you to broadcast, if you wish, every game of your campaign at the same time. It's if you like television. You can only watch one game on TV at a time, or we'd say if if there was multiples of the national carriers like TG4 One, TG4 Two, TG4 Three, who do a brilliant job on the games, but they can't do everything. So what streaming allows you to do is to take games that will be on at the same time and simultaneously broadcast them to a platform. And it also allows you to control your game's exposure by suggesting that you can take your games and you can broadcast them on several different platforms at once, be it Facebook, be it um, live stream, YouTube, Twitter, whatever. Okay. So this is the bit that I promise I will not bore you too much with. How does streaming work at a technical level? Compression, encoding, transmission, CDN, decoding, and video playback. That is basically what you would employ somebody like myself or Mac AV or some of the other streaming professionals in um, the country to look after. Basically, if we were to take these one by one, compression is a way of squeezing a very, very big picture into something that is consumable on a mobile phone in a poor data area. The way it's compressed and transmitted is by encoding it. So basically, if you could imagine we're taking the sum, something the size of a watermelon, we're cutting it up into little pieces, and we're shoving it down a garden hose. That's what encoding it is. Transmission is the garden hose. It's the method on how we get out of the ground. We get out in either 4G, laterally 5G, E1, STM1, STM1A, and STM4. They're all forms of data transmission. So the garden hose then needs to get connected to something. So again, using my gardening analogy, because that's where I spent a lot of yesterday afternoon, uh, the CDN is the tap. It's the water main. The CDN is what's known as a content delivery network. These are, the, these are names that would not be familiar to you, like um, Akami, AWS is Amazon, Bright Cove, Limelight, and Lightstream. These are the people that host the majority of the video streaming in the world. Netflix in Europe sits on Amazon servers, okay? So once we've got that watermelon down that garden hose, shoved into that tap, round that water main, it needs to pop out the far side. That's what's known as decoding. So encoding, you squeeze it in, decoding, you take it out, you patch it back together, and you present it to the person who's looking at it on their desktop, their laptop, or their mobile phone, and then it becomes video playback. As I said, I'm not going to gloss over it too much. And I can see that um, we haven't lost anybody from, oh, we've lost one person. <laughs> I thought that was someone's phone breaking down. In terms of a diagram of how we would lay out um, a video streaming operation, again, I'm going to use my mouse here. So if you're looking at your computer screen, acquisition is effectively everything that's going on in the ground. Okay, you've got your video cameras which come into your video switcher. You've got your microphones, so you'll have a microphone on your commentator and on your analysis, and you might have one or two microphones down at the field um, to catch the atmosphere in the ground. That goes into an audio mixer, which is fed up to your video switcher. If you're going using, like if you can imagine PowerPoint would be your graphics, um, all of that comes all back to your video switcher. It comes out on a cable, and goes into your streaming encoder. I have a streaming encoder on the desk here beside me, which when we come back off the presentation, I'll show it to you. So that your streaming encoder then talks to your internet, which goes out to your server and goes into this horrible little thing called the CDN. That's your content delivery network. It comes down to your ISP. ISP is your internet service provider and it pops out to your end user. The graphic of the end user might be a little bit dated there because it's showing a computer and um, the end user is now consuming um, about a third of their content on 
non-computer devices. And again, when we look into the paywall element of it, I've got a graphic that will show you the breakdown of some of the paid for subscriptions um, that we did last year. And that again is a more simplified um, graphic of how it works. Video, encoder, your data, either local internet, 4G or 5G, satellite uplink into the cloud, pops out on either Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or a private CDN. Okay, so that is streaming from a technical level. If you choose to do it yourself, um, naturally, not everybody can, you know, we'd say afford to bring in a streaming provider. So you might have somebody in your club or in your organization or your family that can lay their hands on a camera, a couple of microphones, whatever. So they're going to, you, they're going to have a bash at doing them themselves. So a couple of tips. Never video from the sideline because all you'll ever see are the people that are close to you on the playing field. So get a high location. Always have the sun behind you. It's the oldest thing in the book when you're learning any form of photography. If you have a bright light behind the subject that you are wishing to capture, the subject appears silhouetted. So always have the sun behind you. Be careful what you say. I'm caught out with this one regularly. A microphone on a phone or a video camera is always live. And if you're streaming directly from a single device, the opportunity to switch that microphone off is not always in the place where you want it. And the one thing that infuriates me by people who would be streaming things, um, we'd say on a single camera, is they tend to lose the play. They might be behind the play, they could be in front of the play, they could be chatting to somebody on the sideline and not realize that the ball has gone out and they're still focused on the far side of the field. Always, always, always follow the feed. And if mommy comes up and asks you, do you want a bottle of water? Just this time, for the duration of the game, ignore mommy. In relation to video, some tips for um, videoing a match. I have to say this, never use a phone. Phones can't zoom. Phones have very poor microphones that don't give you the ability to put a microphone into it. Phones are shaky. Even on a tripod, they're shaky because you, might, you will use the opposite of the pinch, the, the kind of the pinch out to try and zoom in. That in itself shakes the phone. And if somebody is consuming this on a device larger than the phone you're using, all of a sudden their iPad becomes very, very shaky. The picture becomes very shaky and it makes what, the, what you're trying to do less attractive for somebody to look at. And in 10, people tend to just drop off and, and not continue to watch it. And they pop back onto Twitter to look for updates on the game. Phones use a lot of data when they're using video, when they're transmitting video. Um, and this, this is something that we've, I've done a kind of a, a study on. Like the average match streamed off um, an iPhone can use up to four gigs of your data. So bear that in mind if you have, you know, we'd say a capped data plan or whatever. No, Again, I just pop in there for a second of course, Jackie, yes. on this point, because I saw it last year, particularly um, around club games. I saw games streamed on mobile phones and to be quite frank, they, they looked awful. And there was mm -hmm. there was one of them uh, whereby I was actually looking at the game like this, Rory. It was sideways. Yeah. And no matter what way I, I turned the phone. The, the game was still skew ways. It, it was shooting into the... Yeah, I, I, I was actually going to come to that. If, if you must use a phone, put the phone on its side because the computer screen you're looking at this on right now, lengthways is longer, vertically is narrower. Yeah. So if you're to take your mobile phone, you need to have it in that orientation because people are not going to take their computer screens and turn it upside down or up to one side or take their laptops and leave them lopsided just to suit suit what is coming out on the phone but even yeah, even, very in the comments, even in the comments roy when, when whoever was streaming the game and i won't name them was alerted to the fact that the, you know 
we were looking uh, upside down effectively at the game. Uh, mm. it, still, it, it still wasn't uh, cottoned onto. And it goes back to the point you made just a minute ago, Rory, in terms of the attractiveness of it. Just have a bit of pride in what you're doing, right? If you're, if you're going to stream matches, do it the right way. You know, get a, provi- get a provider, uh, get a professional in to, to assist because there are, um, there are a few out there now who are really, really good and they're worth investing in. So I just mm-hmm. think on that, Roy, this is probably for me one of the most important slides on your entire presentation. So uh, okay. thanks for raising this one. And, and, and again, Jackie, I'm very conscious. I don't want this to turn out to be, you know, an hour long advertisement for me and what I do. There are other excellent providers dotted all over the country. Like, you know, like the LGFA have partnered with MacAV in Northern Ireland there for, for, for many years and they do a tremendous job. Um, you know, they just, you know, look, if, if you feel that using a phone is not going to work for you, then by all means, talk to one of us, you know, we'll offer advice. Um, and, you know, every, everybody in the industry today offers a scalable product. Like I can put eight cameras into a ground. Do you want eight cameras for, you know, an under 16s game? You probably don't, but you want one good camera that will not break down and will look well. You know, so there, there's every one of us offers scalable solutions. Naturally, the more things we put into the ground, the more cameras, the more which if you want graphic replays, etc. All of that, you know, it it does attract a cost. But there, there are things we can discuss offline and you know at a later date. Um, and and makes a good point in the chat uh, there. Uh, and from Sligo, it's definitely the way forward, but it needs to be done right, or we will lose fans rather than mm-hmm. increase viewers. Good point. Yep. Or, yep. Indeed. If you don't showcase yourself properly, people uh, first. I guess Rory, the old saying, first impressions last. If you're looking at somebody streaming a game for the first time, you're going to take one look and you're going to say, "Yeah, I'll I'll stay with this and I'll watch uh, another game." Or I yep. don't like this. I'm never coming back here again. Mm-hmm. And if, in, in fairness, Anne would probably be very familiar with some of the work that I did for for her organisation last year as well. Like we had, we had a fairly high pressured day between Kesh and and Markovic Park. I think over nearly an eight hour period. But again, and I've got I've got some video clips of some of the stuff that we've done coming up later on in in the presentation. Shall I move on. Yeah, kick on, Rory. Okay, okay. So if 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 I've convinced you not to use a mobile phone, there are some very good entry level cameras in the market that will not break the budget. All right. Now, when I look at cameras, um, these will be called what you call prosumer cameras. They're not the ones that you go into Harvey Norman or PC World and buy for three or 400 quid that you'll stick up in a small little lightweight tripod that you could blow and make fall over. These would be ones that have got a decent zoom level on them, and most importantly, a decent connection out of them. So when I'm talking decent connection, I'm talking HDMI, or if you want to go a stage further, which is more expensive, the connection you'd be looking for out of a camera is SDI. SDI stands for Serial Digital Interface, and that is broadcast standard. That is the single coaxial cable that's connected on BNC out. Um, it'll either go straight back to your switcher or else it will go into a little box in the back of the camera that converts it into fiber optic and you run it down a fiber cable. But again, that's me getting technical again. I want to make people yawn. So if you were to shop around tomorrow morning, there's a list of four very good prosumer cameras that are all they're all sub 1500 quid. Now 1500 quid might sound, like, might sound like a lot of money, but if you were to take that and do 10 successful games out of it, you've probably A, done me out of five of them, but B, you've done 10 successful games. And going back to the comment that's been made previously there by Jackie, you never get, and Anna, I beg your pardon, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. All right. Somebody switches on to your game, be it on Facebook, be it on YouTube, be it behind a paywall. They're investing time in spending that hour and a bit with you to watch that game. Whether or not they're watching Little Mary or Little Carmel, their granddaughter or their daughter on the field, that is somewhat irrelevant. They're still investing that time out of their day to spend it with you and your sport. So this is you putting your best foot forward. 
and any of those four cameras would give you very, very good output. What you will see on the front of the camera is that horrible little thing that my mouse is circling right now. That's the microphone that you find hard to switch off. The controls for that are over here. When you're doing a game, um, sorry, beg your pardon, let's go back to the cameras first. But on those cameras, you've got two microphone inputs, okay? They're over on this side of the camera where my mouse is now. It's just out of sight, it's on the far side of the camera. So you have a microphone for your commentator. Stick one down in the field as well, because the last thing you want is it's sounding like the commentator is just commentating from their bedroom. The microphones I use are these, Shure SM58s, and they're not expensive, okay? 100 quid will buy you one of them right now. And the fact that I saw them actually down from 115, I ordered another two of them there today. But a decent microphone, and if possible, place a mic on the picture near the crowd, it gets a bit of atmosphere into it. And the one thing you don't do, and I'm gonna do this now, is you don't have the microphone right up to your mouth. You have the microphone back about four or five inches from it. And then if you yell at an exciting part of the game, it doesn't distort. And it doesn't sound bad like that. So they're just two kind of elements of streaming tips, both on audio and video. The next part of it we'll move on to are the streaming models that are out there. You've got three main streaming models. Number one is the free model, which I think the LGFA in general have exploited and exploited very well, especially last year. I think the level of exposure that has been given to the games has been phenomenal. The free model is where you're basically pitching it up with them um, with no revenue generation at all. You've got model number two, free with sponsorship, which is exactly what it says on the tin. And you've got model number three, which is the pay one model. Um, that's probably not the most popular model at the moment, but that is where it is going to. And that's where it, it's probably largely going to in general with all sports, whether we like it or not. And COVID is what has accelerated this by about three years. Okay. So we dip into those models very briefly. First model being the, stream, the free model. It is exactly... As, as it says on the tin, free, free, streaming. <laughs> free streaming is available on the following platforms, Facebook, YouTube, live stream, Twitch, Switchboard, and Boxcast. I have an asterisk beside Facebook. The reason I have that is Facebook are now flirting with paid for um, live streaming content. Um, I have one reservation about that. In any of the paywall providers I've used, I always like to be able to pick up a phone and talk to them about an issue with the stream, with somebody's credit card payment, with something that's gone wrong. I challenge one person here who's had a technical issue with Facebook to ask 10 members of their family, to ask 10 members of their removed families, if they've had an issue with Facebook, who do they call and have they ever spoken to a human? So that's the one reservation I would have with, with going that way. Free with sponsorship. Uh, I am literally jumping through these because this, this presentation is being recorded and you can watch it back again at a later date. And I'm sure Jackie will forward any questions on to me that come in even after this tomorrow or the next day and we can answer them individually. So streaming models free with sponsorship. Here is where you, you still go to Facebook, you still go to YouTube, you still go to live stream or Twitch, but revenue is generated by means of offering sponsorship. So you're going down to Joe's hardware store. Joe's taking an ad in the program for the game at 150 quid. Joe, for an extra 100 quid, we'll make a video ad for you and play it five times. Twice before the game, twice during halftime, and twice at the end of it. You get 10 people taking that extra offer. That goes a long way to covering your costs of streaming the match. You can also have your main sponsor pay a little bit extra to have their logos featured on the screen. Here's an example of a logo that was dropped in at a match I covered 
um, in, I think it was a very wet cover curry two years ago. Okay. You can also sell ads in the middle of half time. Um, very briefly, this is an ad that we made for Figalis, um, for the, uh, who are a bus hire company in Sligo this year. Uh, I'll play it very briefly for you. Figalis Travel Centre Sligo has been a family run business since it began in 1951. We have always taken our customer satisfaction with our service personally. Figalis Travel Centre would like to wish the Sligo LGFA the very best of luck in their finals day to day. Remember, for more information, check out www.sligobushire.ie. Sligo Travel on 071 914 3000. My, my voice was clearly in a, in a better form that day, but that's just an ad that we presented. Oh, sorry, I played again. That's just an, an ad that we produced for a local business that got played. And again, it was tailored to what was going on um, during the day. So it was tailored to the actual competitions. The final streaming model is Paywall. This is the one that I told you it's been accelerated um by by covid because during covid people have been turned on to streaming whether it's streaming a match or sadly and i experienced this my, myself at christmas with with the passing of my own father or whether it's streaming a funeral streaming whether we like it or not is here to stay and it's going to be here after covid after covid as well so we have to monetize it so it is going that direction benefits of a paywall very quickly it allows you to generate revenue and not just in COVID times. It gives you very high quality access to your games. All of the paywalls are using higher quality encoding and video delivery methods than what you will get on social media. It gives you a dedicated landing page. I'll show you a quick example of them very shortly. You've got analytics on both who's buying and who's watching. It allows you to manage the assets, the assets of your games, and it also gives you CRM, which is customer relationship management. You can compile a database, which is GDPR compliant, of everybody that watches your games. In relation to paywall examples, these are dedicated landing pages and purchase pages. This is one that we constructed last year for Connacht GAA. They will go into the landing page, click on the game. Oh, I beg your pardon, let's go back once. They'll click on the game and up will come a purchase page. This is the actual purchase page that was presented to anybody who went in and wanted to buy the Giva Tour Strand game for Sligo LGFA um, last year. That was the premier final. I've got clips of that game coming up later. When we say from a management point of view, that's an example of your dashboard. You're instantly presented with your revenue, the audience per game, payments on the system. And again, I'm being GDPR compliant here. Those are blacked out. You want to see who's logged in and who's paid for your games. This is an interesting screen over here, if you follow me. This is what I was, I was referring to earlier on. Only half of the people who are watching streamed content today are watching it on mobile devices, okay? 36% watching them on desktop. Now, I know these are from a specific set of analytics from Sligo, but they largely mirror the national trend. OK, so you have 36 percent of people watching it on desktop, which is nine times out of 10, a 24 or 21 inch screen, which is the size of a small television. Out of all of this, we have what, 505 people on tablet, but this is the one that's growing. Last year, we had 5.63 percent of our audience, which is a bit behind the national trend of 13 percent watching it on televisions. The year previous, when we were going free to air, we had only about 2% watching on, on television. Gaming consoles as well, you can target who's watching them on that, and then other media, again, you can see down to 2%. The exact same, and by the way, you can see it all by country, and it's a Google map, so you can hover in and see what country is watching it. A lot of people in Australia, North America, and Canada, and Alaska, believe it or not, and oddly enough, there was a spec in Malta and the reason I know it was in Malta, that was my brother. Um, and again, you, you can break it down by, by, country, by country, I beg your pardon, the same way. An example of your customer relationship management, you have absolutely everybody and their email who has logged in and paywalled, all right? Um, we are coming, we're coming toward the end of the presentation, folks. Got two more slides. And I have, this one's titled, When Working Behind a Paywall, Up Your Game. But I would refer back to what Jackie was talking about a week while ago. 
if you're going to stream the game, up your game. You know, if you're going to do it, put your best foot forward. In relation to the presentation of the actual game, these are titles that I created for um, Sligo LGFA last year. And I'll just play these for you briefly. So those, those titles last just under a minute. And what they are is basically signifying to somebody that your program has started. Roy, just an FYI, the sound wasn't massive on that on that piece. So it might have been, I don't know what the, what could the story have been, was. Oh, see, I, that's, that's where I have the sound there. Is it that you just didn't hear it, Jackie, was it? it, it well, on, on my side, perhaps anybody else in the chat might say it. I, I couldn't really hear it uh, at all, Roy, and whatever bits came through were glitchy but look it looks fantastic and i'm sure okay well i don't know then how the next how the next slide will work because the next slide is basically clips of um of games that we did try it anyway rory look, if, no if, it, if it didn't if it didn't come through i'm just looking can i change anything on my audio settings here just bear with me um built-in mic yeah i'm using the built-in mic We'll just see what happens on, on the next yeah, one. Yeah, no problem, Roy. Just but, an FYI for yourself. Okay, so, so where I was going with the titles was I, I have an attitude of always aim as high as possible and then where possible, you know, where, where obstacles get put in the way, if they can't be overcome, then step back. So what I've always tried to do is, and especially when we went behind the paywall, is I tried to create a television experience. So we would have your opening titles, we would have your graphics on screen showing your management, etc. And again, I'll 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 come oh sorry, just change that. I'll come to that in in this um yeah in this slide. Um I'm, for, I'm not sure if you can hear it now, but if you can't, at least you'll see graphically what we had done with it. But effectively we tried to bring as close to a television experience to, to to the person who was looking at the game as possible. So it would have started with the opening title you've seen there. It would have started then, we would have cut to your commentator who would have introduced your um, your co-commentator. There would have been clips from both sideline cameras and main what we call rostrum cameras uh, on the day. And then we would have your presentations at the end of it and things like closing graphics. And again, when the person who was watching this, who again, who's invested their time and spending it with us on that day, when they switched off, what I wanted them to get was, geez, lads, we were looking at a television program there. And I think that was largely, largely what we achieved. So this clip is, it's just over five, well, it's just under six minutes long. So look, I'll play it for you. If the audio is an issue, um, we can make the clip available on YouTube, um, or I'll make it available to Jackie over a private video download link and he can distribute it to you. Um, and just, just to give you an idea of, of what it's like. And this is, this is actually the last slide in the presentation. GAA data you live for the Premier Football Final between Tour de Strand and Giva. Throw in here about 10 minutes away. Delighted to say on analysis with us this evening, we've got the Slug of Baller and St. Anthony's footballer, Noel Gormley, with us for the next hour and a half or so. Noel, good evening to you and thanks for joining us on our coverage. I suppose a novel final in many ways, the Premier Football Final between Tour de Strand and Giva. First, let's just have a quick word about the conditions because as viewers and listeners will know from the intermediate final earlier today, very inclement weather here in Sligo Town and unfortunately things haven't improved over the last 90 minutes or so. Yeah, the last 20 minutes has just kind of poured down so it's going to make it very interesting because the first 
O'Reilly at six because we all know she's one of the most accomplished forwards in the game nationwide. But at number six, what sort of qualities does she possess for that position? It's a very interesting move, but this isn't a new position for Steph. Uh, Back in 2005, she was played there and uh, was found to be very hard to break down. Yeah, and there are the shortest strap management team, the brothers Paddy and Michael Henry, of course, vastly experienced. And Paddy, of course, the manager of the Sligo Ladies Football, as you, you mentioned. It. Shane, I've been There's an interesting matchup that I can spot already. Claire Dunn picking up Stephanie O'Reilly. Yeah, and I see Katie Walsh has moved to full forward, so there's a first round against trying to get the ball in quick. Colin Gunning is our match referee. Immediately, the ball is into the possession of Giva, who are attacking the dressing room end in this first half. Ball is with Megan Davey on the far side of the park. Now, Elaine O'Reilly might try and get a boot on this one from 20 metres out, but that goes across the face of goal. Spy plays that one off nicely to the full forward, Sinead McTiernan, who's momentarily dispossession control for Katie Walsh. Tara Walsh also making a good run there. Walsh will try and kick this one from an acute angle. Oh. Into the net. It's another goal for Torna Scran and Katie Walsh. This time I don't think Walsh intended it. It was certainly a 10 for a point but it's gone over the head of Ashley Sweeney and into the back of the net. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, there's only six minutes gone in the game. Kiva just needs to stay in touch. Uh, it might be a case of purple patches, but I think the water breath is a new thing in, in football at the minute. So yeah. it can either ball as, as we're looking at it now, there is there's no player on the goalkeeper Ashton Sweeney in the Giva half of the field. So they're kind of they're, they're trying to suck the Giva players in down through the middle. Yeah, and they're coming down the middle once again. This time Stephanie already with this at the required distance and only to drop into the arms of Laura Walsh who collects that shot from Stephanie O'Reilly. It's kicked out from Laura Walsh, but it's gone out over the sideline on this side of the field. Katie Walsh now back, sorry, no, what? Katie back in a more defensive position here for this particular attack as the ball works its way. Welcome back to Markovic Park where it's finished in a draw on the Sligo LGFA Connacht Gold Premier Football Final. It's finished Torla Strand 3-9, Giva 2-12. The game goes to a replay. The final goes to a replay. We'll get some post-match reaction for you here now on SligoJ.e and on Ocean FM with uh, Paddy Henry, the joint manager of Torla Strand. Paddy, not quite sure what to say to you after that Titanic finish, but you're you're still there. Yeah, we're still there, all right. But still trying to look in the last quarter now with the way the game sort of won and Two managers embrace after that titanic tussle, David. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm not sure what to say to you either after that, but we're still in the championship. Oh, we're, we're still in it. Um, I suppose we, we were very lucky there to to, uh, to, be, to be still in it. Like we, we had a terrible start, and, and we can see the two goals in terms of strong opening. Chairperson of Sligo LGFA is not going to present the cup that has to wait here for another week, but there is one more award to give out, and Raymond, that is the Player of the Match Award. Yes, Carl, thank you very much. It was a thrilling game, and a, a lot of contestants in the Player of the Match Award. But this evening, our judging ju panel, if you like, have picked Sarah Connie from Tourist Strand as the Player of the Match. <clears throat> so that's the final item of business from a busy day at Sligo LGFA County Finals Action. Just a reminder as well that Sligo LGFA have launched a new website, sligolgfa.com. You can check that out online. It went live today. My thanks to everybody involved in today's broadcast across the three finals. Congratulations to Shamrock Gales and Orua on their respective successes. Commiserations to the teams that have lost today, Colry St. Joseph's and Eastern Harps. And Torla Strand and Giva will do it all over again next week in the Premier Football Final. Thank you for your company from at home today and enjoy the rest of your Saturday evening. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was largely what we did um, last, um, last year for Sligo LGFA. And that brings the, the presentation from my side to, uh, to a close. Good morning, um, Murray. Just while, while I just am on the screen, I'd mentioned the little live streamer. Um, that there is one of the boxes that I use to get out to the world. That is um, a Be On Air kit from a company called Avi West. They're French. And what it gives me is all my inputs and outputs on the front of it. I've got HDMI, I've got SDI, and then I've got my network connectivity. Um, what it does is it gives me six individual connections. And what it also does is it bonds all of those connections together. 
So if you've got six connections running at, we'd say 10 meg each, that'd be at full power. You've effectively got a 60 meg uplink, um, which has given you very good picture. It also means that if you go along and unplug one of those modems or one of those modems fall over, the other five modems instantly pick up the slack. It will run on one modem coming out of the ground. So in order to mitigate against dropouts on it, I would have two SIM cards with air, I'd have two SIM cards with three, and I'd have two SIM cards with, um, with Vodafone. So you'd want to be incredibly lucky if, um, if all of the mobile networks went down. Um, but again, where I can also, I'll try and get um, Cat5, our local internet as well. Uh, and recently I've even had to go into somebody's house and string a cable across their back garden. But, you know, needs must, you do these things. Rory, fantastic. So um, with that, Rory, I'm going to um, stop recording before we take uh, uh, the Q&A. So okay. Rory O'Brien, thank you very much for uh, this evening's presentation. Appreciate the time. Thank you very much.